Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale: Marion's Path. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. Please sit back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes while I entertain you, and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you're up, and let's go. <clears throat> Alrighty. Surely they are, I think to myself. When alcohol and puberty collide, mischief is sure to result. Maybe there ought to be rules about drinking at so young an age. Then it hits me. One of Grand Spiel's. Rabina's boys, cows, cows found tipped over in the fields. Who would have guessed that one rumor to actually be true? Oh no, they must have heard about, they must have heard the mooing. Look, they're going towards Fiona! Marion sounds incensed, and rightfully so. The Zerophians dare not come near a prized heifer. I open my mouth to shout, but I feel a hoof clamp down on my lips. Shh, I have a plan. A plan? What are you going to do, jump out and say boo? Ha, <laughs> uh-oh. God, all these young kids are just... These young kids are just drinking. They're just completely shit-faced. She walks away, tiptoeing to Fiona, whom the boy, whom the two boys now stand beside. Their speech so comes so loud and slow, and undoubtedly smells of whiskey. She's a big lass, this one. Hey, what if we can't tip her all the way? I suppose we'd call it lean beef. Their laughter is interrupted by an enormous belch. And, and what if we can but then it would be grand beef, wouldn't it? Each gives the other a shove, either for the bad joke or for practice, or both. Then just as they reach their hands out for Fiona. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ha! <laughs> that fucking kid is just staring. I mean, it's really hard not to notice. Those things are fucking huge. Moo! Despite wearing a war face that would have made William Wallace proud, Marion seems to have hardly phased the bootered boys. Hey, what's with this cow? Is it wearing a... Is it wearing a tablecloth? I think so, and she's got the biggest udders I've ever... Fuck! That's no way to talk to a lady! Uh-oh. Now they've made her angry. And that is when Marion killed two tiny children. <laughs> she digs her hooves, lowers her horns. Uh-oh. Maybe we should, uh... Uh-oh. RUN! <laughs> the boys scream and take off across the field, with Marion hot on their heels. A chuckle. Clever girl indeed. A smaller one trips and falls into a mud pie. The other turns back to give Marion a word I dare not repeat, only to take a powerful headbutt to his groin. Cravens hope Rabina didn't want grandchildren. Marion and I fall to the ground in a fit of childlike giggles. I'm proud of you, Marion. A little envious, too. Envious? Whatever for? I'm simply full of pep and vinegar tonight, that's all. I'd like just a little bit more of your spirit. I can give you more than that, Malcolm. She kisses my lips before holding the whiskey flask to them. We go back to kissing with deeper passion, the house forgotten as we collapse into the grass under a canopy of stars. I thought they were going to be doing a little bit more than drinking. <laughs> that kid just staring at her tits. That's so funny. Mama, those things are huge. Don't look, look away, Billy. Look away. As the summer draws on, I find myself spending more time on more time on the cloud form than my own. Grant is understanding as we're as we're still able to get everything done that needs that needs doing at both locations barely. Never have I. Never have I seen you more happy, nor Marion, she tells me. Her encouragement sets me further on a course towards a comfortable life with my love. Marion, indeed, helps me as much as I help her. For it's not just the hard work that binds us, but the pleasure of being together. The touch of her fur, the safety I feel knowing, knowing we are a team. Knowing that she understands me. Our bond is tighter than ever. Somehow beyond all our comprehension, things feel normal again, even if our normal is just a bit peculiar. It turns out, looking at wee cow... Looking a weak cow like isn't all that consequential, day to day on the farm. Who'd have thought? Other or no, the animals still need feeding, the laundry still needs cleaning, and the soul still needs affection. That last responsibility I take very seriously. The return, huh. Grace and I continue to help Marion through difficult times, but thankfully she's having more ups and fewer downs than ever before. They, could they possibly mean Jesse? We even go back into town together from time to time, albeit heavily disguised. 
Gran confides to me that we are prompting whispers, not just about Marion's unusual disguise, but also to the effect that I am courting her. Let them whisper, I say. Better yet, confirm the rumors. Make the church pews buzz louder than the bees in their bonnets. At home, most importantly, with Jesse gone and Grace at work, Marion finally learns to take care of herself, to put herself first. It was small things at first, me assuring her that enjoying an extra cup of tea in the morning or her needlepoint by the fire in the evening are fine ways to behave under the circumstances. Now at times we find ourselves crawling into bed before sunset. They late hours left unworked, but with the old Marion of thought, not to mention that these early evenings are not always due to exhaustion. Of course, none of this is to say any less of a hard worker. To say she's any less of a hard worker. As the weeks pass, the livestock are tended, the barn's walls are repaired, and the field beets are harvested and shipped for fodder. The herd is excited not only for the new menu, but also by their newfound companion. Marion and the cows have formed quite the connection. I sure not to be jealous. Marion's behavior towards them is almost motherly, and so very adorable. The cows in turn give us more milk than ever before, which pushes our cheese making to the hilt. It's another shared effort. Marion makes, makes wheel upon wheel of sweet milk chatters, and I sell them to the cheesemonger. We came up with the name Marion's Dandy Dunlop, and it's been getting praise as the tastiest cheese in town. Well, the added income from the cheese is helpful. The greatest benefit has been the boost to Marion's self-esteem. Life is steady. It has an even flow of drudgery brightened by accomplishments and the gratification of love, of falling in love and being loved. I wish that were the case for Marion's youngest sister, too. But for Grace, it's more drudgery and less than anything else. Yeah. Grace comes home one evening after a full day of scrubbing the stag and nanny, her limbs sore and her knuckles worn. She collapses at the table, releasing an avalanche of mail. Cravens, Grace, did the postboy deliver us the mail for all the Wester, Ross? No, it's just been a few weeks since I last picked up the mail. <laughs> weeks? Oh, don't get your tail in a knot, it's mostly catalogues for Jesse. Nonsense. Nonsense, unless you're all that at all interested in cigarette holders or piano shawls. Rayan rifles through a, pair of, through a pile of papers. Oh no! What's that? Rail racy lingerie advertisements? With a shaky hand, Marion holds up holds up one letter, one lone letter. She hands it to me and open, and I see it's postmarked from France. Grace has caught on that Marion is scared. What is it, Marion? Bills? Taxes? We can take care of it. I'll work longer hours. Please don't fret. You look as though you've seen a ghost. Tears form in Marion's eyes. Should I read it? Yes, now, please. Marion's body trembles. Grace gets up to hold her sister still. For goodness sake, Malcolm, what is it? I tear open the seal and read aloud that which confirms Marion's fear. My dear daughters, I am writing to tell you I have received my discharge papers and will be travelling back to Octa Craig as soon as possible. I trust you have all been well in my absence and that I will find the farm in better shape than I left it. <coughs> oh, bless me. Sorry about that. I impatiently await the day I hear your voices and see your beautiful faces. Perhaps by the time you receive this message, I will be home holding you all in my arms once again. Till then, I send my regards. Owen. So a different kind of return. Marion's father, Owen, is returning home. I hope we never thought of this moment. Why had we ignored it for so long? Grace has gone silent, seemingly numb. Tears flow down Marion's face. Part of me laments that the news of one's father returning should be should be cause for distress, but thinking on my own the thinking of my own on my own parents I sadly can relate. I try to give it a positive spin. Well, I'm glad he's safe. Truth be told, given how long it had been since the girls had heard from him, I was about ready to assume the worst. Marion, I, I understand. I know this will be hard, just remember. Even if he can be a bit old fashioned, he's still your father. No, Malcolm, he's not. Don't you remember what Alana said? Marion's sister opens her eyes and speaks softly. He still cares for you. He may not show it very well, but of all of us, Marion, he cares for you most. You remind him of... Grace voice, Grace's voice trails off even as Marion's hooves clench tightly together. I'm not mother! I'm not even the daughter he thinks I am. You're still you. You just have to accept that. She shoots me a pained look, as if pitying my nevet. No, he doesn't have to accept anything. I've been so lucky, Malcolm. With you, Grace and Agnes and Alana, you've all been so accepting. But having my father back here will ruin everything, and rather all we've built together. He can't see what I've become, what I am. Grace holds her sister again, leaning into her shoulder. I try to think of what might allay her fears. I could use some liquid courage myself. Maybe, somehow, he doesn't have to find out. You've gotten so good at hiding your... 
Malcolm, no! That's just it. I'm sick of hiding. I'm tired of sheltering myself, of hiding in public. I want to be free. I'm free here at home. Having him here will rob me of that freedom. I want to agree with her. I also want to try to convince her some good might come of this. She'll have her workload lightened. Her father will understand, won't he? Maybe not. The more I think about it, the less over-the-top Marion's reaction seems. The scene plays out in my head. Hello! Hello, Owen. Nice to see you again. Do you remember me? I'm the boy... Uh, hello, Owen. Nice to see you again. Do you remember me? I'm the boy who lived next door. I'm your daughter's boyfriend now. I've been living in your house for some time. Don't worry, there's plenty of room for all of us, because one of your daughters has become a flapper and gone off to the city alone. Welcome home! Oh, and one other more thing. Your eldest daughter is the eldest daughter is a cow. A shiver runs through me. I've heard meeting your war your would-be father-in-law could be nerve-wracking, but this has me quaking in my boots. What would Owen what would having Owen here mean for Marion and me? Would she leave? Would she leave me? Would he forbid her from seeing me? Would he kick her out, shame her, and abandon her? Gran and I would welcome her in our home, of course. But Marion how would she feel living next door after such treatment? It could be like an open wound that never heals. Oh fuck, who's this? My train of thought is broken by a loud knock on the door. Marion sobs ceases, her eyes grow large as saucers. Grace? Her words come slowly, deliberately, and as quietly as a mouse's whisper. Tell me, exactly how long did you leave the mail uncollected? Marion's sister don't, won't, doesn't answer. Her eyes, too, are fixated on the door. Oh, come now, ladies. It could be anyone, really. My voice is shaky, though, as I, too, picture gruff old Owen McLeod behind that door. Who else would venture all the way out here so late at night? Perhaps one person. I've never been more hopeful for a late-night visit by Alana. The knock comes again, even louder. Gray shrinks behind her sister. All right, Marion, go hide in the bedroom. I'll... No! Marion straightens up, stealing herself. No, I won't hide. Not in my own home. Not anymore. Come whatever may. I nod solemnly, proud of my dear Marion and how strong she has become. Come whatever may. Marion, we will get through this. I know we will. Oh boy. I remember the battlefields with shell-shocked soldiers, shell-shocked shoulders begging. Shell-shocked, shell-shocked soldiers begging for mercy. In the terrifying moment, I found Marion panicked about her body. That immobilizing terror is gathering inside me again as I place my hand on the door handle. Be who we think it is. Wait, Jesse. Like coming back for a visit. Times of reflection. Periods in your life when you look back and wonder how you survived. Malcolm had been through worse. Seen the true evil of man. For Marion, the scenario was unfathomable. But for me? It was a painful reminder that until I met him, no part of my history was one I remembered fondly, nor with any pure clarity. Cherish your loved one, Marion. Don't let fate slip through your hooves. Chapter 4. Seen and Heard I knew it! It's Jesse! Ah, that sounded way more excited than I <laughs> than I'm used to. <laughs> A high voice rings out. Good heavens! Took you long enough! Since when do you lock the front door? Jesse? Ma Malcolm? Um, how are you? It's apparent that she is as surprised to see me as I am her. I'm, well, well, welcome, yes, welcome. Welcome home, Jesse. I stutter, still trying to wrap my head around the unexpected visit. This isn't Marion's worst nightmare. It might be a dream come true. Did, did I stop at the wrong farm? Grace pushes herself past me with a force that belies her size. Jesse, oh my word, get in here. <laughs> oh my. Your sister's a cow, gonna have to just break it. She's gonna be more, way more accepting of than anyone else, probably. Grace drags Jessie inside, holding her tight. Sw <clears throat> Swaying her this way and that. A sisterly reunion of squeals so high-pitched the noise dizzies my mind. And Grace finally lets go, lets Jessie go. She looks up at her sister with amusement. You rascal! So you went, to, you went and visited old man Bulgare before your own kith and kin, did you? 
Now that the elements are pick up on the scent of the stag and nanny coming off Jesse as well. Beg your pardon? I'll have you know I was headed straight here when I was invited, nay, waylaid by that old man. Twould have been improper not to have accepted a welcome home drink. Sure enough, Jesse is jumpy and slurring her words, and I suspect that her first drink turned into several more. Grace must have just missed her when she left to get the post. Jesse's eyes veer towards me. Speaking of unexpected welcomes, tis good to see you, Malcolm. But what are you doing here, and where's Marion? I struggle to find my voice, and I'm saved by Marion finding hers. I'm here. Like, <laughs> oh no, oh boy. We all turn to the source of the quiet admission. For a moment, the room is perfectly still. Even my breath catches in my throat. Oh, Jesse! And Jesse's like, what the fuck? Ha! Marion barrels towards her returned sister, nearly knocking her to the ground. I chuckle. I sudden like a bull rushing towards a terridor. A terridor. And Jesse's red skirt makes the image all the more perfect. They hold each other tightly, but Jesse keeps her eyes open, scanning Marion's body as if trying to figure out if she even knows this person. <laughs> oh my god, her face was perfect. Oh god, everybody's looking at the giant tits! <laughs> I thought you I thought I would never see you again. And I'm I'm not sure what I'm seeing. But Marion? Marion's round face turns as red as Jesse's nose. It's me, Jesse. Just... Oh, it's Marion under there, all right, as Malcolm can intimately attest. <coughs> Fuck. <coughs> oh, good lord, Grace. Oh, God, you gotta warn me when you do that. Grace! My cheeks flush. Fortunately, Jesse seems too busy processing what her eyes are seeing to read into Gra Grace's innuendo. Tis a costume for the heifer parade. Marion, you're adorable. No, Jesse, it's... Marion lets out a yelp when Jesse reaches for Marion's ears and gives them a tug. No, if not for the heaven parade, then, then why? And how do you get the makeup so realistic? I'm impressed. I thought... Ah, <coughs> 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 oh. oh, I just needed a swig, man. Okay. I'm impressed. I thought I was the only one here with cosmetic skills. Oh. Marion rubs at her ears a moment and looks ready to cry. With happy or sad tears, I can't tell. Jesse, let's sit. Grace will bring us tea. We can all catch up. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Marion gathers herself. Yes, it's a night for rejoicing. Oh, Jesse, I cannot express how happy I am that you're home. I I'm so relieved. Tell us everything. Wait, methinks you should start, Marion. What's with the, uh, the... The fur coat? You can forget your little red dress, Jesse. Jess. Marion's gonna start a hot new fashion trend. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it, pause it right there before I fucking choke on my tongue. There we go. Alright, unexpected guest. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye